Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. Bar swing owner. This should be a good one. Hey guys, welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. And I am going to take a look at a Strictly Lindy Hop competition, which obviously <clears throat> this format has a little bit of choreography and a little bit of social dancing mixed together. It's one of my favorite kind of competitions because I get to see a little bit of both. A little bit of both in a short period of time. And it looks as if they are going to actually do this to a live band, which is awesome. So the musicians uh, will kind of be watching the dancers. The dancers may or may not know the song. They may not know all of the different hits that the drummer might emphasize. So it's going to be interesting trying to judge this. Uh, I'm going to use my critical eye. Obviously, when someone's in a competition, uh, a lot of this is subjective. There's only a few objective things like control, the technique, uh, being able to you know lead and follow. And I'm only going to you know the person who gets third place generally will get that third, second, or first. You know if you can control the technique. But I'm going to assume every one of these dancers can dance because they are in a final and they're also in this competition. Because who would go out there and not know how to dance, right? So I'm not actually gonna be looking for control. So I'm only looking for a first place winner and a second place winner. I want to see the timing, what you can do with the control, with the music, and I'm also wanting to see something new, some creativity. I wanna see something I haven't seen before, which is a very rare thing to be looking for, uh, and Lindy Hop, unfortunately, but I have a hip hop background, uh, which is a base, which basically is a modern swing dancing mentality uh, or a vintage swing dancing mentality, which is show me something I haven't seen before. Come at me, bruh. That's how they were in the Savoy Ballroom, and I, I kind of like that. And so I want to see something new, and that's going to be the first thing I'm looking for. Whoever gets first place is doing that, plus they have incredible timing, and obviously they know how to do the control. So I got my fingers crossed. Let's get into this, Bar Swing Ona. And here we go. All right, let's get into it. <clears throat> Looking for top two, folks. I think this is a good warm up. Nice and slow. Usually when it's slow like this, <clears throat> and they're really good, there's a lot of restraint. I can see they don't want to do too much. They're just giving the audience an opportunity to see who they are, what's their personality. <clears throat> My eyes immediately ignore the people who start doing a whole bunch when they first come out, right? Already liking a few folks. Already. <clears throat> so let me tell you what's going on in my mind. Like right now, the, the couple that is most attractive to me, and for reasons I will elucidate on after this competition, is the lady with the blue shirt, black pants, gentleman with the brown blazer, black pants. So far, uh, they have my attention. Okay, 
Whose face is that? Ah, that's Niels. Another dancer, another judge. All right, audience is involved. They are excited. Let me see what happens. Nice and mid tempo. <clears throat>
Good job to everybody who put themselves out there in front of an audience. It's not easy at all to do that because everyone is being critical. They are judging you. They're thinking about your dancing. They're either liking it or hating it. And most people are silent, except people like me. I like to put my opinion out there um, because I love Lindy Hop. And I'm also a judge and critic of Lindy Hop, and I like to see who's going to be contributing new ideas in the future uh, to make an impact on future generations. So, I like putting my ideas out there, my opinion out there. Here's my opinion. This one, uh, this particular competition, based on the dancing ability, uh, was challenging for me in the sense that I had expectations of simply looking for timing and uh, creativity, but because there, for me, was a lack of the control for everybody in a very unanimous perspective, there was only like two or three couples that had strong control. So I've got to give a shout out and make a, a third category. I've got to you know, at least give a third place to some couple because just being able to do the technique in a way where, as a judge, I can see control between the leader and follower, and they're not both like moving at the same time. I can clearly see that. Uh, that's exciting, and I gotta, you know, point that out to the couples that did it. Now, obviously, 
if the couple did that the best and that was the only thing that they could do well, they're third place. Um, if there were couples that could do the timing better and they had a little bit more creativity, they might be second or first place. So let me start with my first uh, couple that I liked. First couple that I liked that I think would get third place is the couple, the gentleman had, let's see, he had a white shirt on and his partner had like gray pants. Yeah, I think she had a black shirt with gray pants. What I liked best about them is they had control. They did not at once look rushed or nervous or distracting. And again, what I mean by distracting is the leader getting in the way of the follower. Because really, the leader's role is so simple. Just start something and prepare for anything to happen, good or bad. But really, the follower is the one that has to take whatever just happened and move somewhere with it. And in reality, that's the part we're actually looking at, which is the finishing of that move. So if a leader and a follower can actually play their position right, then all the leader has to do is just set something up and remain quiet so that that idea can be seen. They do that well, that, that's huge for me. That is the technique. That's basically what makes all the styles work together. Everybody has different personalities, but if they have those ingredients, it can still work together. And that couple for me displayed that strongly. They had a couple of moves that were familiar moves that I know that are uh, really good and hard to execute. Uh, they were leadable moves and the follower was able to follow them, which I think is great because you could choreograph it or you could just lead and follow it. And, and from what I could see, I knew that they knew these moves because I've seen them before from some of my peers that they, they created them, but they were still able to do them in a way that did not look like uh, it's choreographed. Right. And that's no fun when you can have a move that is actually lead and followable, but it, then it looks choreographed. Ah, it's kind of it takes away uh, the essence for something. So they got third place. I don't know who they are. Couldn't really tell. I'm watching on video, but I liked their dancing. That's my subjective opinion. Their number one asset for me as a judge is they had control of the technique. So great job. My number two on this list. If I was uh, being extra critical, this was tough. My number two, obviously for me, would go to the couple. Uh, she had uh, blue and black on, I believe. Yes, she had like a, no, she had like a navy bluish dress. Uh, and it has like some kind of flower pattern on it. It might be black. I think it's gray, like a grayish bluish black. But the the leader had on like a blue hat with like blue shirt with like two pinstripes in the middle. They were demonstrating a lot of control. They did a whole lot of social dancing and they didn't do a whole lot of choreography. You win a lot of credibility for me in that. Um, obviously Lindy Hop is two sides of the same coin. You have performance on one side, which is the choreographed things. And then you have social dancing, which is more improvisation with a, with a basic technique, right? And so they, for me, were able to balance that in a really healthy way so that it wasn't overly choreographed where I you know, can look at it and kind of devalue social dancing. But they were able to make me appreciate the move or the couple of special moves that they did when it was choreographed because they social danced and their social dancing isn't just a statement for me it was good social dancing they had a phenomenal amount of control but they also had some unique moves they put a lot of effort into their choreographed pieces and i liked that um one person might say well how do you like theirs better than the other couple well it's subjective i liked what they did just as much as the third uh the a couple i got third place in my mind but what I liked better is that they did a little bit more social dancing. They had a little bit more control. That's it. That's it. Their, both of their dancing was very impressive. Um, but I liked their control element a little more. And I liked the arrangement of their choreographed moves. It made me actually appreciate them more because they didn't do a whole lot, right? So 
big salute to those people, those couples that did that. Now, my first place couple, this was interesting because I like weird. Weird is good. All weird is is just one note, right? Duke Ellington said something about like, there's never really a wrong note. It's all about what comes before or after it. And this is how their dancing was for me. They had some quirky things that they were doing, quirky mannerisms. The tone of how they were dancing wasn't super predictable, where every move was, you could see it coming, and then there was like a response that was there. No, it was, there was some variety there. I knew they could do swing outs. I knew they could do tough turns, but they didn't choose to do that the whole time. They basically did things that were a little disruptive. They would have some quirky things. And the follower was able to read the visual cues, right? Because some of the things were suggestively led. They weren't just led based on energy or sharing that energy. It was based on a visual cue and a pause where the followers aren't moving anywhere, but they were still able to communicate and do something that looked like they were working together. That's actually just as hard as leading. So you have that, that couple doing that, and that made them stand out the most to me. They had control, they had some timing, and their creativity wasn't necessarily that they did something I haven't seen. It was just their overall way of moving wasn't predictable, and I liked that. So if you can just switch up your tone a little bit and not look, make all of your movements look so predictable, or mix it up some and you know, make all your movements look like a surprise and then every once in a while make them look predictable, you will stand out to the judge, especially to me. And so that couple, for those of you who've been waiting, uh, that couple goes, that first place goes to the follower who had like blue, she had like a blue shirt on, black pants, and the leader had like a brown jacket on, really nicely groomed beard and a ponytail. I loved their movement. There was something very like disruptive about it. I did not see everything coming. And that is part of the beauty of Lindy Hop. If you can make your social dancing look choreographed, that's next level dancing. Because it's easy to choreograph, especially in a Strictly. So there you have it, folks. That's my order. Those are the dancers I like. If I was at that event as a first time visitor, I would probably go timidly talk to those dancers and be like, hey, I like your dancing. You know, those people who do that. And uh, I would probably have my little phone out and I'd be recording their dance moves, trying to do them without any clue of how Lindy Hop works. You know, I'd be thinking about moves. And so if you, if you are like that and you're just trying to figure out like how this thing works, I encourage you to take a couple of my classes online. You don't have to wait to go to a big event like this. You can have a deeper understanding of how this dance works. There's something that you can't see that's actually making all of these dancers be able to dance together. And so we share a little bit of that technique with our free classes, about 20, 25, 30 classes um, and I hope you enjoy those. Let me know who you thought should have won this competition. That's my big fat opinion. I don't mind putting it out there and I'd love to hear yours. If you want to debate me, fine. I love it. But we are talking about subjectivity. We're talking about our opinion and how we actually like to determine what's good, what's mediocre, right? So let me know what your opinion is. I'd love to hear it in the comments section. If I don't see you in class online, hopefully I will see you in the next reaction video. Congratulations to all the dancers who perform in this competition, and hopefully you'll get a chance to dance at Bar Swingona in 2020. Take care.